Before I start the talk today, I'd like to introduce Bikuni Damika. And she's going to be with us. We're not sure how long, but it, we hope it's a long time. Um, she's, she's living in Sri Lanka now. She is from mainland China, and she'll talk to you one day. She just arrived a few days ago, so. Um, she, she grew up in China, and then she became a bhikshuni, or a Mahayana nun, and then, uh, you were, did that for how many years? Were, were you a bhikshuni? Six years. Six years. And then she wanted to study Theravada, so she, Theravadan Buddhism, so she moved to Sri Lanka, and she's in the small, uh, bhikkhuni, uh, monastery that's just below Bhante Sujata's in uh, Paradin in Kandy. And so she's been there how many years in Sri Lanka? Uh, yeah, about six years. Another six years. Yeah. So she's in Damawasa, uh, Bhante Damawasa, who's Bhante Sujata's teacher, is her teacher. So it's, it's wonderful to have her here. So make your, uh, in, if I tried to introduce her to a few people coming through, but, um, Please introduce yourself to her if you have a chance and let her, let her know you're, we're all available for her. Um, this morning she was, she's staying with Julie Gibson for a few weeks and, uh, she was walking here to, from Julie's house and she said people all over were bowing to her. They'd get, do a bow and she thought, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so surprised. But in, in fact, sometimes in China, some, some areas they don't know Buddhism. They see me, oh, who? They, they see, see me like like fight a monkey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all so strange. But he is very kind. I love. I love. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> Woodstock is a good place for someone to come, right? Because whether people are Buddhist or not, they're so familiar. They all know the monks. So that, how, what, there couldn't be a nicer uh, welcome for her. Was, and someone gave her a ride to the temple because she'd gotten lost. Wa- she was walking from Julie's. <laughs> and and it's feels in Woodstock, that feels pretty safe, right? <laughs> so she made it and... Uh, met a wonderful people and had a good introduction to the city. So she'll, I'm sure she'll be, you'll be seeing a lot of her and she'll be doing talks and she'll be, she'll just, she just needs to become comfortable with us. But it's, it'll happen fast. So that's, uh, that's our wonderful news for today. So I wanted to talk a little bit, uh, a different topic, but about the precepts. And I wanted to talk about, and, and what it means when we take the precepts. But I wanted to talk today, and I, I hope I talk about this more, um, because there are some suttas I want to bring into it. But I wanted to talk about the community that we form when we take the precepts. And the community, whether we take the precepts or not, we're all part of this community. And we th- we call that a sangha. So the Buddha talked. They're they're different. They're the the sangha, the the ordained sangha. And and the the ordained sangha consists of the monks and the nuns. And uh, our relationship is supposed to be to be we're kind of codependent on the lay people sangha. Uh, hopefully in a good way. So the monks and the nuns were taken care of by the lay sangha, and then the monks were uh, teachers and were, were there to, to teach people and to, and to help people. And that was, there was a recip- reciprocity there. And today it's, that relationship is, is evolving, I think, especially in this country. But when we have a community like this, in a temple, the the you this group form, forms a really important, significant community, and then there's also the community all over the world. You know, of all people who 
who uh, practice Buddhism and all monks and nuns all over the world. So we have those larger communities. But like with the precept, we, we don't have to globalize, right? Even that community. Because the important thing about uh, the community here is, and I think the important reason that we have it and we and people come to the temple. You can all meditate at home. You can all study at home. So why do we have a community? Uh, it might be a hassle to get up and come at the times that we offer. We have services. Or you might prefer to just sit in your pajamas, you know, on a cushion at home. And why do we come together as a group? And why do we, why do we feel that this space is special? And I think it, it connects with our precepts, whether, whether you've officially taken them or not, the precepts we can practice every day is our intentions. And we know if you've come to other talks about it or if you've taken the precepts, we've, we've been talking about having the intention every day for yourself and for all other beings not to do any harm to any beings, uh, not to take anything that doesn't belong to us, not to... I'm already getting them out of order. What's the third one? <laughs> I thought I had this down. Um, not what? Not to lie. That's number four, isn't it? What's Okay. Not we, I have the intention every day not to harm any other beings. Number two? Okay, you got it. I should have known, Dave, you'd have it. <laughs> so the intention not to take things that don't belong to me or that were not given to me, not to, not to engage in false speech, and then we can extend all the other kinds of speech that we can talk about almost without end, right, of inappropriate speech, and not to engage in sexual misconduct and not to uh, become intoxicated and heedless from alcohol or other drugs. So if we use those as an intention every day, we're, we're really cleaning up our part of the pond, right? We don't have to worry about how the rest of the world is doing or how our neighbors are doing or how even anybody else in, in the temple is doing. And um, we need to keep it as close to us as possible because these precepts are the things that we've taken on to, to be, be the best we can be. I mean, it's essentially, this is, this is what I want to, I want to be uh, able to practice meditation. But I can't do that if my mind is cluttered with all kinds of remorse or guilt. I can't do it if my mind is... Uh, is always thinking about other stuff. And we know that the precepts help us uh, soothe our minds because our life is getting, our act is getting cleaned up every day, a little bit more, a little bit more. Just because our inten intentions and our awareness is on those precepts and we stop a little bit and think maybe before we have to make a decision about those. So we're working with those every day for ourselves. We're not trying to put them on to anybody else. And if you take the, the uh, precept ceremony, it's really important that you know we never tell anybody else that they have to take the precepts or that they ought to, that they need to take the precepts. Or if you come to Blue Lotus, you have to take the precepts. That's a completely inappropriate way to talk. Because the precepts are extremely personal, and it's about me personally. Uh, I might not be ready to take the precepts. For, I mean, I wasn't ready to take precepts until I was 56 years old. Um, and that was just for five of them. So it's, it's not, we're never uh, ready or not ready. I mean, the, taking the precepts is just our own personal step on the path. And we can certainly be on this path without taking that formalized, uh, you know, uh, ceremony that we do, right? It doesn't have to be formal. 
uh, any of uh, the, 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 the Buddha's teachings are full of him giving precepts to people. Just someone, uh, when he, when he ordained people to become monks, and I think even with the nuns, it was just he gave them permission and then, uh, you know, go get a robe and get a bowl somewhere and then, you know, now you're, now you're a nun, now you're a monk. <laughs> And it would be, uh, I mean, it was very simple. There didn't have to be lots of, uh, you know, we've gotten into a lot of ritual and ceremony and things, so that's not everybody's cup of tea. So it's, I guess what I want to say, this community plays a big part in helping us uphold those precepts because we're, we be, we're noble friends when you come start coming to meditation and people see you and they start talking to you, we're, we're doing it always under the assumption that these are people who have uh, some of the same values I have, but they have some of the same aspirations in their life that I have. Maybe not, we may be way different in terms of other things, but we're all coming here. We all want to have a quiet mind. We want to have peace of mind. And we, we like the way we're doing it here. So we start depending on each other, and we become noble friends. And noble friends are people you can trust to be a good friend, to be honest with you, and to be, uh, you know, if you need to talk to someone about something, they can listen. And if you, if you have anything on your heart, you can share with that person. And... It, it's easier to do that when you know the person has maybe the same direction you do. Not in your job, in you know, your career pathway, or not in how much money you're going to make, but in your, in your spiritual path. You know that person has, has designated a part of their life to be focused on that. That's a big thing. So... When we, if, and if people practice the precepts, we always talk about, well, your, your group, who t- the first time you take the precepts, that's, that's kind of like a little sangha in the big sangha. So these are people that you might, that you, you kind of get together when you come to the class ahead of time and when you're helping each other straightening your uh, silk scarves around your neck. And so people you didn't even know become people that suddenly you have, you feel a connection to them. You may get to know that group a little bit better than some other groups because you just, you know, you're, you were sitting here together the same day. Um, so we have all these little communities within communities. <clears throat> but what I, and I wanted, so my focus is, is on, uh, talking a lot about the precepts and how they work for us because as I've said in October, October the 12th, we have our next precept ceremony. But um, the more important thing that I want to talk about about community today is, is how, how we can practice with this community too, how we can practice with this group of people and with the monks because we're part of the community too, we can we can practice those precepts before we ever hit the street outside. And I think I think it's very important that we think about this because uh, we're going through a transition time right now. Bante Sumana left. Uh, Bante Sujata's gone a lot. We're 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 this is a community that's it's always changing. But sometimes we're just closer to the change, so you know we feel it. We feel it pretty strongly at the time, and so we're reorganizing some things and trying to make things. You know, we're of course Bande Sujata is also telling us do more, do more, do more. <laughs> so we're trying to juggle all of that, and so we're reaching out more to volunteers, and we're 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 really wanting to see the community. Uh, Develop as much as it can to keep this thing, to keep us going, to keep it rich and to keep it, uh, so that we're not, certain people don't carry the burden for all the work, all the, and that work is not the, the burden. The work can often be a lot of fun. It's a wonderful way to, 
to experience this community. But if the same, same people are always doing it, it gets old after a while. Bill, <laughs> I mean, Bill's been here since. <laughs> and in earlier years, he, he, you were, you and the other people who started out, you carried such a heavy load. Most of the time, now your wife wouldn't say this, I'm sure. Most of the time it's, it's fun. But it, but families sort of take a beating along the way, right? So, um, there's, that's one way we can be a community is to, to look and see the things that interest you that are going on and then find a way to get involved with it. And, and it doesn't have to be something that you don't enjoy, but there are times when we need people, you know, to stick around and clean up after events. And used to, when it was a smaller group, that would be a long day, but it was a lot of fun to be in that old kitchen together. I mean, a lot of laughs, a lot of people getting to know each other better, and uh, you really see, too, how, how wonderful people can be when they just pitch in and do things. Jason's another one. I mean, a lot of, a lot of nights we all spent together in the, in the kitchen, and that old kitchen was something. Um, so those are some ways to get to be more involved in the community. But the other ways I think we can practice, so uh, helping out and volunteering, of course, that's being generous. And that's, 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 uh, we believe, you know, that's, that's one of the main virtues that the, the Buddha talks about. That generosity becomes part of how we let go of self. Because we're, 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 we know it's okay to give good things away because we have enough. It's not like we have to hang on to our good energy all the time because there's, there's always enough. And the more we give, the more we feel we get. So the thing that I'd really like you to think about is uh, in creating this community and tying it in with living by these basic precepts, we need to be practicing right speech with everyone in the community. We need to be uh, practicing right speech in general. You know, that includes gossip and just chit-chat. I mean, most people come to the temple because they really want the peace and quiet of it. So if we get too caught up in chatter and chit-chat and things that don't have any relationship to it while we're here in the building, for some people, that's they they need to get away from that. You know, they want that good feeling to last longer. But I think in just in all of our interactions with each other, we can become the perfect commu- the vehicle for all of us to practice right speech and to practice that. Um, you know, paying attention to someone, like talking to someone and trying to really be available for them and uh, maybe they need maybe there's something they need to talk about and we need to be listening more to 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 realize it's time for us maybe to not talk and to just listen and we need to um, and I'll say this because because I'm because I'm not one of our male monks I'm gonna I think we have to really uh and I'm not talking about myself because I, I don't ever feel like I've been treated uh, improperly. But I think it's very important when we have, we are a temple, so we have monastics. That's the traditional Theravadan um, way of teaching and being community. But there are, it, there needs to be a, a, a there is some distance between monastics and lay people. And, and the, the thing that we have to always remember is we have to be respectful to the monastics. And you know here we hug and we, that's perfectly okay. But we have to be careful about how we speak to monastics and the respect that we show them. And um, I especially think about our monks from Sri Lanka they have been training as a monk from the time they were 10 or 11 years old. So when they come to us, even if they're super young, like 25, they've been training, I mean living the training, not just 
you know, taking classes at night. They've been training for maybe 14 years to be a monk. And uh, they, they have literally given, given their lives to this practice and to this, uh, the role they play. And I think it's always important if we, to not, they, they're wonderful and they're funny and I'm not going to quit joking and teasing with them or anything like that. I don't think you should either. But I think it's very important that we respect these, that we, that all, we respect all the monastics, but especially I think our, our monks who have trained for so many years and their their only their only impediment to just kick and butt, <laughs> and I'm talking about with their teaching and their and everything they do is a little bit of a delay in their language, in their English, and they're all studying. And now they come here and go to school to study a third or a fourth language for most of them. So. If we, if we need to listen a little bit more carefully or if we need to be patient sometimes if there's something, if we don't understand a word and when they're teaching, we can always ask them. You know, I do it all the time, like they have to say it since I'm getting deaf several times sometimes. <laughs> but their, their, the depth of their knowledge and their experience and their wisdom is profound and, uh, and it's the way they live their lives too. You know, it's the discipline of how they treat each other in the house. Well, they've they've lived they've lived all their lives living in community, so they know uh, if someone insults them, they they aren't going to respond back in kind. I mean, they 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 have been trained in how to work with their anger and how to work with difficult emotions and how to let things roll off their back. So I think for us as a community, um, we need to start, we can use each other to train in respect and proper, I mean, there's so much that these monastics can teach us. And that might be in just a brief conversation with them. I mean, it, it can just be, a, a something that you've ha- you have a question about, or something that you that you want to know more about, or something that's troubling you, and uh, that's that's what the monastics are for. But I think sometimes because we're so casual with each other, I've seen people use wrong speech around the, the monks. It becomes a little bit too easy to treat them like young their younger brothers or something. <laughs> And I think that's uh, just, and they they don't have any idea that I decided I was going to talk about this today. <laughs> Nobody came to me and said, wah, somebody's been mean to me. But but sometimes I've seen it. And I think if we, if this is how we choose to be Buddhist, that we, it's really important to learn the proper uh, relationship between monastics and lay people. And it certainly is, it doesn't have to be artificial or anything stilted or uh, uncomfortable, but there is a level, even though they're so, our monks are young, to me they're all young. <laughs> but we still, what, we are, what we're honoring, when you, when you bow to a monk or a nun, you're really honoring the robes that that person's wearing, and it's important to remember that. So if there's any kind of... Uh, 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 if you're if you aren't respectful to a monk or nun, you're really not being respectful to the robes that represent the Buddha and the teachings of the Buddha. And and if you have a problem with one of them because you think they did something that's inappropriate, it's perfectly okay to privately go the same way that we want to treat each other in the community. If you have a problem with a person. And as you become noble friends, that doesn't mean you, you never have issues or problems. But what you do is what we do when the Buddha talked about right speech. He also said, it's right, is it the right time to talk to someone? Is it the right place? Like it's probably not in a room with other people in the room. Is it the right time? Is it the right place? Is it kind? Is it necessary? And is it true? And if you use those criteria, 
then then you can think, okay, this may not be the right time to say, uh, you know, to tell Bikuni that, you know, she has her robes on inside out, which <laughs> which I have done before. But Bante Sumana, Bante Sumana usually, you know, looks at it and tells me my rice patties are the seamed on the wrong side. So, uh, but if it's something that you think that they've said that's offended you or, or uh, you have a problem with something personally about that person, you, you don't have to say, well, I, I guess I can't speak to them, but make sure you, it's done. And that goes for everybody. The, is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it the right place? Is it the right time? That's, that, that works for everybody. But if we can't show the monastics that, uh, that kind of right speech, we're not, we're probably not showing it to other people either. So that's when we can let this, this whole group of people, before we even leave the building, we can practice the precepts with each other. And we can practice right speech with each other. And, uh, that, that makes it easier. And, and it makes it, uh, sometimes there's, there seems to be gossip in the temple. And it's, that we know is not right speech. And, and it's usually people with very well-meaning things, but there's a, there's a, a lot of times information may not be clear enough, uh, clearly communicated enough from the temple side to the community. And so there are things like that that, I mean, that's, that's a perfectly good thing to talk about. Like what, what kind of communications does the community need that the community's not getting? And that would be this, you're the community. And that's a good discussion to have. And, uh, because we also have a board of directors which is separate from the monastics. So we're the spiritual side. The board of directors is the, keeping the building going side uh, and and you are the you are the found you know you're everything you're 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 the you're the reason that we do this so i think i think when we think about the precepts let's think about our community too as the place where we can truly uh practice the precepts and practice everything about right speech and uh, that can really transform it so we can and we we need to have we have the same I have more than the monks do but we have and we have a lot we have more rules than the monks do so um, we have lots of rules and lots of them are about the way we speak to people and the way we act around people so it's something we're always working on too it's not I'm Please don't think I'm saying there's something you guys aren't doing, but we're always great, because that's, that's not what I'm wanting to say at all. But I think as a complete community, this is an area that we can, we can use this community to help all of us be, be exactly the kind of people we want to be. And sometimes we get outside in the streets, and it seems really hard to practice, uh, like right speech, because we just don't encounter it very much. <laughs> it's not, and so it, we, we get into situations or groups of people where we know we're kind of loosey goosey about it. So, uh, use, use your community because this is what it's all about. We don't need this building. We need a space big enough to hold everybody if we want to have a community, but we don't need, uh, you know, we, it's it's not the building we need; it's the people we need, and it's the the relationship we have with each other that's the most important thing about this. That's the only reason we have community, is because our noble friends are the most important part of this entire practice, and that's what the Buddha said. So, okay. So, thank you, everybody. <laughs>